Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video, I will be showing you a full demo on how to use machine and deep learning to detect and classify COVID-19 or which is known as coronavirus based on X-ray chest data. Data science and deep learning have been revolutionizing healthcare and medicine. Deep learning has been proven to be superior in detecting and classifying disease using imagery data. For example, skin cancer could be detected more accurately by deep learning compared to dermatologists, for instance. In this case study, we will assume that you work as a deep learning consultant and you have been hired by a hospital in downtown Toronto and you have been tasked to automate the process of detecting and classifying chest disease and reduce the cost and time of detection. The team has collected extensive X-ray chest data and they approach you to develop a model that could detect and classify disease in less than one minute. You have been provided with 133 images that belong to four classes, healthy, COVID-19, bacteria pneumonia, and viral pneumonia. Please note that this case study is part of my brand new Udemy course entitled Data Science for Business. And the course covers six practical real world case studies that will teach you how to truly leverage data science to transform businesses, increase revenue, reduce cost, and improve processes. I included the link with a great discount code for you guys in the description below. Let's get started with this case study. So here is the Google Colab. And please note that I included a link to the Google Colab in the description below so you guys can check it out and run it on your machine as well. Okay, so first, I divided this uh, problem into a series of tasks. So first, we're gonna start with an understanding of the problem statement and business case. And please note, I'm just gonna walk you through it from a very high level. We're not gonna be doing actually uh, any coding. Just gonna show you what's happening from a very high level. And um, you guys, again, we're gonna have access to the collab. You guys can explore with it uh, step by step. Okay, so here, Basically, um, AI and ML and deep learning have been revolutionizing uh, healthcare. And again, you can leverage it with medical imagery, with drug research and genome development. And basically, uh, and I included a, a link here to the paper, that the skin cancer could be detected by deep learning at a much higher accuracy compared to humans or like dermatologists with like, you know, multiple years of experience. And that's again, amazing. And I would say scary at the same time, if you think about it. So human dermatology detection actually reached around 86.6%. However, deep learning detection is around 95%, which is again, pretty incredible. So in this case study, again, we are gonna assume that you work as a deep learning consultant and you have been provided with images of healthy patient, COVID-19, bacteria pneumonia and viral pneumonia. And you just wanna build a deep a neural network to be able to classify all these images and that's it that's all what we're going to do okay all right so first we're going to import all our libraries and data set that's in task number two and then we're going to import here we're going to mount the drive and then we are going to take our data and that would be an x-ray directory and simply we're going to find that i have four folders within the directory I have the folder two, zero, three, and one, indicating basically images from all these four classes. And then I'm going to generate, use image generator or image data generator to generate images. And I'm going to simply generate batches of these images. And I'm gonna resize them as well. And here I'm going to use basically batch size of 40, take my X-ray directory, shuffle the data as well to make sure that the network we're not gonna learn the dependency, basically, of the order of these images. So that's why we're gonna shuffle them. And then we're gonna set the target size to be 256 pixels by 256 pixels. And you will notice that here we have the class mode is categorical, because again, we're gonna be doing, doing categorical, simply a classification. And the subset will be validation afterwards. So here I'm gonna have my validation generator. Here I have my train generator. And simply, I'm just gonna be dividing my data into training, and then after the model is trained, we're just gonna be validating the model afterwards with just a bunch of images that the model has never seen before during training, okay? All right, 
So here are the shape of my images. Here I have 40, again, batches of 40. Each one is 256 by 256 by three. Again, because they are colored scale images, I have red, green, and blue. Okay, if you guys recall from basic uh, image, um, um, image basics. Um, so let's go ahead. See here I have my labels. Here I have 40 by four. And for four, that indicates simply either 1000 or 0100 or 0010 or 0001. That's basically the diff four different classes that I have. Okay, that's pretty simple. So that's kind of the train labels that I have here. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply translate them. So I'm gonna say, okay, when you find class of zero, that's corresponding to COVID-19. If I find class one, that's corresponding to normal. Two, viral pneumonia, and three is bacterial pneumonia. And that will be my label names. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna maybe explore the images a little bit. Just wanna create a grid, and that grid consists of six um, rows by six columns, okay? And every time, I'm just gonna select random image, and then on the title, I'm gonna basically plot the label for that image. Pretty simple. So here, I'm creating a quick, brief for loop that goes between zero and the length, length time the width, which is simply six by six. And every time, I'm just gonna show the image, I'm gonna set the title to be basically my, um, I'm gonna go here to my label names, and simply just think of this kind of the translator, and then I'm gonna print out the name corresponding to my label, either zero, one, two, or three. And here we go. So you'll find that these are the various images, the chest ray images, uh, the X-ray images, and indicating these are normal, 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 that's viral pneumonia. Here I have that's COVID-19. Here I have the bacteria pneumonia, and so on. Okay, so what I wanted to do I wanted to train a deep learning model to simply take all these images and just do the classification for us. So think of this kind of from a business standpoint, it is that just instead of relying on many doctors, for example, which is a lot of um, hospitals right now in the US, they are struggling with having, you know, like enough staff to basically do the predictions for you. So if you can train a deep learning model to actually do that job for you, now you can free up the time for a lot of doctors for a lot of nurses, which is pretty amazing. And you can even automate the process for them. You can simply just take images. These images will be fed to a deep learning model to do the classification. And we're just gonna tell you, okay, based on that image, if my patient is okay, if my patient has COVID-19 or whatever, and then we'll be able to actually automate the process end to end, which is pretty powerful, okay? So first, I'm just gonna cover from a very high level, again, the theory and intuition behind convolutional neural network. So here I have a couple of slides for you guys. So basically what's convolutional neural network does, just I'm gonna feed in the image, and they're gonna have layers of convolutions that try to extract features from these images. There's a lot of math behind it, but this is just, you know, like, again, I just wanna teach it in a compressed, I would say, time frame, just to give you the idea from a very high level. So the convolutions just extract features, and once you do that, then here you have a dense, fully connected artificial neural network that can do the classification for me. So now I can feed in the image and it can tell me one of four classes in the output, okay? And simply, this is kind of what's happening. So here I have my image, here I have my kernels or feature detectors. Here I apply a ReLU activation function to just introduce some nonlinearity in, um, in my network. And then I do pooling or downsampling. Think of this as kind of a way of compressing the features just to reduce the size. And then you take that, you flatten it up, flatten it up, and then you feed it into the dense, fully connected artificial neural network to do the classification for me. Here is a little bit um, of the deep learning history. I included it for you guys, if you guys are interested. We started with Lunet in 1998, and then AlexNet, and then ZFNet, and then GoogleNet, and InceptionNet, and then VGGNet, and then ResNet, which is 2015, and that ResNet basically revolutionized tons of applications and industries. Why? Because it's, first, it's very efficient. Second, you can actually like obtain the network pre-trained already, and you can just do a little bit of like tweaking to it using what we call a transfer learning. And you will find that ResNet, actually the error on 
um, the image uh, image net is around 3.57 percent which is amazing compared to even humans which is getting pretty incredible so this is an overview of resnet simply again a convolutional neural network but what it does it just have i'll call it the um, skip connection and the point is is that as you increase the depth of the network as you have a, a lot more deep network what happened is, is that um, you all these networks suffer from a problem called the vanishing gradient problem but when you do the skip connection which is what we have here you would be able to feed in the input to all the series of convolutions and you can skip all these convolutions and feed it in when you do that you'll be able to actually avoid the vanishing gradient problem and the network will actually gonna work like magic gonna be amazing so now you can train it and you're not gonna suffer from the issue anymore so what I'm gonna do here in this case study is that I'm gonna get a ResNet, but I'm not gonna be training it from scratch. Think of this as kind of, you know, you're doing transferring the knowledge from an expert, just taking it and then tweaking it a little bit, okay? And the really good example uh, to cover transfer learning is here. Simply, if you find someone who does, let's say, um, ice skating, for example, you will find that in general, they can actually do skiing pretty easy because the core skills are pretty much the same, okay? And that's the idea. Now you take a network that do image classification and feature extraction, and you can just tweak it a little bit to do exactly uh, COVID-19 classification and detection, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing in this case study. Let's keep going. And this is simply what the transfer learning process. Simply have my convolution on your network. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, it's already trained, right? So I'm gonna say half of it, think of this, just the early layers. I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna transfer them here, and then I'm gonna add a new dense classification head. That's all what it is. And that's it, I'm just gonna train the network afterwards. I can freeze these layers, I can train this, and then I can simply just transfer the knowledge of the learning. Actually, transfer learning uh, scares me, I would say, a little bit, because when it comes to humans, we have an issue is that you can't, for example, like, like get the brain of Einstein, for instance, and just keep it. You, you can't do this, okay? Because uh, unfortunately, Einstein died, and he, all the he, all his knowledge and learning, it just captured in you know in books. And for humans to just go and read all these books, it just will take you forever to learn. However, here, you can actually physically download the brain that has been trained to do all this. And these all all these networks just they were never gonna die. They just gonna stay as is, or just get better. Okay, which is again just drives me like crazy. I would say, because now it's just gonna get better. That's it. Just you know better at an exponential rate. So in 20 years from today, you can literally like copy or I would say like become a lot even develop a network that becomes a lot more superior even compared to humans. Which is again pretty incredible if you think about it. So here I have my uh, network. So what I'm gonna do, one single line of code that can transform me or just download kind of a massive brain from the internet, okay? And that brain has over 23 million weights. So think about it, 23 million neuron like connections between these neurons. And you just downloaded it with just one single line of code. Just, just again, think about this a little bit. So here I'm gonna say, okay, ResNet 50, I need the weights that has been trained by ImageNet. And so here I have ResNet 50. Here I have the weights that has been uh, down, uh, trained by ImageNet. I'm gonna say include top equals to false. Do not include the top. And here I have the input tensor, which is 256 by 256 by three. Here I have my base model. So you have my base model and here we go. This is simply train model that then downloaded from the internet. Again, it's open to anybody. And you'll find that tons of neurons, just tons of connections, tons of convolutions. Here we go. And if you keep scrolling down, again, think of this. This is literally like a brain that has already been trained for you. Keep going. And you'll find that I have 23.5 million weights that has already been trained for us. So what I'm gonna do here is gonna go ahead and freeze the upper layer. So we're gonna freeze all the base model dot layers, the upper layer, gonna freeze them. And then I'm gonna add, think of this, just my touch. I'm just gonna add my twist to that model. So I'm gonna take that brain, okay, Einstein's brain, and maybe add a little bit to it, okay, to, to do something 
kind of similar to what they were doing before or what has been trained before. So now I'm gonna add the base model. I'm gonna add on top of it an average pooling layer, flatten it up, followed by dense, and then another dropout to re improve regularization or to add regularization. And then dense, drop out, and then dense. And please know that the output has only four outputs because again, I have four classes in the output. And here we go. Now I could be able to compile my model. And then here I should be able to actually fit my model to my training data. So here I'm going to say fit generator on my model. And, and that's it. So you'll find that here the model is being trained. It's just started with an accuracy. As you guys notice here, 0 0.72, 0 0.7 became 0 0.85, 0 0.89, keep going, up until it reached almost 98%. Again, pretty incredible. And here is the, um, the training loss and accuracy. So you'll find that the loss started very high and keep going down. Here I have my accuracy started here at 1.7, and then it went out to almost 100%, which is again, pretty incredible. And if you scroll down here, I just wanted to show you guys the actual performance of, these, uh, of this network, and here we go. So here what I'm doing, it's just gonna simply take my train network feed it in images that the network has never seen before. Think of this as now we have new patients coming in, the process is automated, right? So we're gonna do uh, X-ray for them, chest X-ray. The images will be taken and will be fed to the trained deep learning model, ResNet with transfer learning. And now the model can tell you right away, okay, what's wrong with this patient? It has bacteria pneumonia, has viral pneumonia, or normal or COVID-19. Again, pretty amazing. And here we go. Here I have the guesses or the predictions from the network. And here I have the true class. So you will notice that normal, normal, that's good. Normal, normal, that's great. And you will find that basically the network actually did a pretty good job, except here, if the guess was COVID-19, however, the true class was normal. And you will find that here it's all good, here it's all great. And here I have a mess up too, which is the guess was bacteria pneumonia and the true was actually normal. And here I have all the different metrics such as precision, recall, F1 score. So you'll be able to actually achieve around 0.85 for precision and 0.82 for recall as well. And here is my confusion matrix. So here basically all the data here, these are the classes that have been correctly classified. And here these are all the mess ups. So here I have two messed up data, two the messed up data points, and here I have one messed up data point, okay? All right, so that's all what I have for this case study. Again, I went through it pretty quickly, but I'm gonna provide you guys with the uh, CoLab uh, notebook. So you guys will be able to go ahead, just explore the notebook, maybe add your touch to it. Again, there are sky the limit. And that's all what I have. Uh, please, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and see you guys in future case studies.